Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com, and today I've got a real treat for you. We're going to be taking a sneak peek at a three-rail O-scale engine that is still being developed and has not yet been produced for sale. What we've got here is a one-of-a-kind engineering prototype of the upcoming brass hybrid Norfolk and Western K2 from Lionel. So before we get into Lionel's rendition of the K2, let's talk about the real thing. The K-type locomotives were made for the Norfolk and Western Railroad. By the turn of the 20th century, the use of steel construction in rolling stock was making trains heavier. And so fairly quickly, a need for larger and more powerful locomotives arose for the N&W. Now, the neighboring C&O Railroad began to experiment with the 482 Mountain-type locomotives, and when they proved successful, the N&W took notice and began to build their own. Initially intended for passenger trains, the first K-type 482 locomotives, the K-1s, were manufactured right around the time that World War I was starting, around 1916 or 1917. A few years after the K-1s entered service, in 1919, the N&W purchased additional units, this time through the United States Railroad Administration, which had taken over the nation's railroads during World War I. The new K-types were built to USRA standards and were given the designation K-2. 10 K-2s were initially ordered by the NNW. They were built by Alco's Brooks Works and were numbered 116 through 125. The K-2s, because of the USRA standards to which they were built, were a bit larger and heavier than the K-1s, and as a result, they had more pulling power. Eventually, another batch of K-2s would be ordered, this time being built by Baldwin, and these were numbered 126 through 137. Now, although the K-1s and K-2s were originally intended mainly for passenger service, they ended up being so successful that they were used for freight as well. The final batch of K-Type 482 locomotives were manufactured at the N&W's own Roanoke shop starting in 1926. These 10 locomotives were designated as K-3s and were the only Ks assigned specifically to freight service. They had smaller drivers and smaller tenders than the K-1 or the K-2, but they boasted the highest tractive effort of any of the previous N&W 482s. However, the smaller drivers ended up being problematic on the rails, and so the N&W was forced to restrict the K3 speeds to under 35 miles an hour. Many of the K-type locomotives served all the way until steam was retired in the late 1950s. Unfortunately, no examples of the K-type locomotives survived as all of them were eventually scrapped. Now, one common mistake that people make when they see one of these Ks is that initially it looks like a J-type steam locomotive, like the famous N&W 611. This is due to the fact that after the N&W built the streamlined Js, they began to install similar shrouding over some of their K-type engines, and so the two became very difficult to tell apart. But once you know what to look for, it's very easy to distinguish between the two. The J is a 484, the K is a 482. So on the J, like the 611, you've got four wheels up front, eight drive wheels, and four wheels on the trailing truck. On the K, like what we have here, you've got four wheels up front, eight drive wheels, and two wheels on the trailing truck instead of four. But at first glance, like I said, it can be very confusing. And in fact, when I first posted images of this model on my Facebook page, I got some messages from people asking if Lionel was going to do the 611. But of course, they're not going to do the 611 because that would not be prototypical for a K-type engine. Instead, because this is a K2, they're going to be doing the road numbers 116, 118, 123, 125, and then of course the unpainted pilot version like what we have here. So Lionel announced their rendition of the K2, the Brass Hybrid K2, in 2018, 
and the model appeared in Lionel's 2018 Volume 2 catalog. However, unlike most of the other trains that appear in the catalogs, you cannot order this from a Lionel dealer. You have to order it directly from Lionel. And in fact, you have to pre-order one before they're made in order to reserve one for yourself. I'll talk more about the ordering process for this model as this video goes on. Now, as I said in the intro, I am once again very humbled and I feel very privileged to have a Lionel engineering prototype on my layout just to give you a sneak peek of a model that has not yet been produced for sale. Now, what is an engineering prototype? Well, what it boils down to is that this is a one-of-a-kind model. There is only one of these in existence right now and you're looking at it. An engineering prototype is a test model that the engineers at Lionel use to make sure that everything's being made correctly on the model. What they do is they have the factory over in Asia produce a prototype and they send it over here and the engineers test it out and they make notes on what needs to be changed before the model goes into final production. Now, because this is a one-of-a-kind prototype, Lionel has not given me this engine to keep. I am borrowing it and I do have to return it when I'm done shooting this video because it's the only one they do need it back. But they let me borrow it to do this sneak peek video so that hopefully it'll help generate some excitement about this model and ultimately help generate some pre-orders. Pre-ordering is very important in this day and age because the hobby is not what it used to be. You know, years ago, Lionel would announce a new model and they would make a whole bunch of them really regardless of how many people actually wanted to buy one. And so oftentimes they would end up with excess inventory that they would then have to sell off at discounted prices. Well, that was great for the customers, but it wasn't good for the business. And so nowadays, most high-end models are built to order. So when the catalog comes out, you pre-order the stuff that you want, and that allows the company to know, first of all, whether they should make the model at all, and secondly, how many they should make. If they don't get enough pre-orders, they may not make the model because they can't justify the expense. And that does happen from time to time. Sometimes you'll see an item that appears in the catalog that ends up never getting made because they didn't get enough orders for them. So it's important that if you like what you see here and you want to order one of these, that you pre-order it now so that Lionel knows there's a demand for it. And secondly, it ensures that you will get one because these things are built to order. If you wait until after the fact, it'll be really hard to find one. So as we begin to move around and take a closer look at this model, I want you to keep in mind that because this is a prototype, it is not a finished product. So for example, on the brass exterior, the brass metal may look a little discolored or stained or tarnished in some areas. That's okay. It won't be like that on the production version because for one, if you order a painted version in the Norfolk and Western paint scheme, it'll have a nice paint job. But if you order the unpainted pilot version like what we have here and like what I ordered, they will apply a clear coat at the factory to protect the finish. Also, the production version of this model is actually going to be more detailed than what you see here. I've been told by Lionel that when they got this first prototype back, they actually got some feedback from some experts on the Norfolk and Western, and because of that feedback, they're going to add in some extra detailing to make it look even more realistic than it does now. Earlier, I called this a brass hybrid K2. Now, what is a brass hybrid? Some people think it has something to do with the locomotive itself, but it actually has to do with the way that the model is made. Most O-scale steam engines these days are made of either die-cast metal or brass. When it comes to Lionel and MTH, most of them are die-cast metal. When it comes to outfits like Third Rail, they are made from brass. Well, this is a hybrid of the two. It's made from both die-cast metal and brass. The frame and the chassis are die-cast metal. The exterior shell is brass. And that sort of gives you the best of both worlds because with die-cast metal, you get strength and durability. With brass, you can have more attention to detail. Going over some specs on this model, the length of the engine is 13 and a quarter inches, the length of the tender is 11 and a quarter inches, and the total length of the engine and the tender together is 24 and three quarter inches. 
The weight of the engine is 5 pounds 9 ounces, the weight of the tender is 2 pounds 15 ounces, and that gives us a grand total weight of 8 pounds 8 ounces, and the minimum curve needed to operate this engine is 054. On the inside, this engine is driven by one large flywheel motor. There are two fan-driven smoke units, one for the smokestack and one for the whistle steam smoke effect. Back in the tender are the electronics for legacy command and legacy rail sounds. Now, there are a few ways you can operate this engine. The preferred method is to use Lionel's legacy command system as that will give you access to all of this model's advanced features. However, you can also run this engine with Lionel's classic TMCC command system. You can run the engine conventionally with just a transformer and some track, or like most of the engines Lionel is putting out these days, this model is equipped with Bluetooth, so you can run this engine using the Lionel Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet via Bluetooth. Okay, we're ready to start this up now. I've been told by Lionel that the sound set on this engine is not the final version. I believe the whistle and the bell are correct, but the crew talk in particular will be replaced with road name specific dialogue. But anyway, let's go ahead and start it up. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? Roger that, dispatcher. I read you. Over. Start up and get ready to move. Over. Copy that. Let's get to work. Out. Okay, so first up, let's check out the whistle. And this does have the whistle steam smoke effect, so you'll see the smoke coming out of the whistle back here. And here's the bell. Here's the sound of water being added to the tender. And here's the steam blowdown sound. Now normally I would play crew talk sounds, but like I said, the crew talk sounds on this prototype are the generic crew talk sounds that you might hear on any Lionel steam engine. And Lionel is going to replace that with road name specific dialogue before this goes into production. But just in case you've never heard crew talk sounds before, I'll play one of the sequences. Air is my dispatcher. Can I get a go? Over. Roger that. Take the green. Over. Copy that. I'm wearing the green. Out. Okay, we're ready to get moving. Now, I did put some Lionel Norfolk and Western passenger cars behind this engine, but of course, they're not included with the engine when you buy it. Anyway, let's go ahead and roll it out.
it up for this sneak peek into the upcoming Lionel Brass Hybrid K2. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I'd like to thank the guys at Lionel. Once again, I feel extremely honored and privileged to have a prototype of a Lionel engine on my layout. It's just so cool. Now, if you'd like to purchase one of these, the retail price is right at $1,400. And like I said earlier, the key to getting one is to pre-order it, and the deadline is rapidly approaching. Pre-ordering is very important in this case for two reasons. First of all, if Lionel does not get enough pre-orders, they won't make the model at all. But if they do end up making it and you don't pre-order one, it'll be very hard to find one after the fact. Now, the nice thing about pre-ordering is that you don't pay when you order the engine, you pay when it arrives. And that made a big difference for me because originally I did not order one of these things, but once I got it in my hand and saw how cool it was, I had to order one. But of course it's December and I've got Christmas shopping to do and I really can't afford to drop 1400 bucks unexpectedly in the middle of December. But because I don't have to pay until it arrives, I went ahead and ordered it That'll give me time to save up the money, and when these things finally arrive around May of 2019, I'll have the money and it'll be no big deal. So if you'd like to pre-order one of these beautiful brass hybrid K2s, you can do so at www.lionlstore.com. And like I said, you need to order sooner rather than later because the deadline is rapidly approaching. But for now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.